Hello and welcome to the Pro Forma Models Student Housing Real Estate Investment Model. Pro Forma Models created this financial model to calculate and analyze the pro forma indicative return from a student housing real estate investment. The model has assumptions for different purchase metrics, investment structures and fees, equity, debt, capital expenses, as well as complex revenue and expense assumptions. The model is highly dynamic and simplifies inputs for even the most complicated and nuanced analysis. The README tab states the model purpose, highlights common use cases, and provides an overview of functionality, formatting, and all of the unique modules within the model. This tab also provides additional documentation, contact information, and a summary of additional products and services available from Pro Forma models to support your analysis needs. This is a robust financial model with the ability to analyze complex investment situations with ease. If any assumptions do not apply to your use case, leave them blank. The left side of the assumption module contains the non-operating user inputs starting with general property information. This is followed by the purchase metrics including the purchase price and calculation of the pro forma cap rate. The following section includes the investment structure and fees associated with the transaction. The model can accommodate up to a 10-year investment hold period. The model is pre-built to charge acquisition fees as well as asset management fees calculated based on value, equity, or cost, construction management fees for completing capital projects, as well as loan guarantor fees. Specific to investment returns, this assumption section has the inputs for the distribution yield as well the two-tier promote structure. This assumption section concludes with inputs for the exit cap rate spread and disposition fees charged on exit. The next non-operating assumption is for the general partner and limited partner equity contribution. The final non-operating assumption input is for the acquisition debt. There are assumptions for origination fees, loan-to-value, interest rate, and the opportunity to utilize monthly or annual prepayments. There are also trigger assumptions to select amortizing or interest only for the loan as well as select a fixed or floating interest rate. Next up is the operating assumptions, which begin with inputs for general property and analysis information. The model also has the ability to input downtime for immediate vacancy due to renovations, as well as a renovation budget and working capital funding. Rents are set by inputting the forecasted new lease rental rates by year by floor plan. The floor plans are entered into the yellow filled with blue text cells below the floor plan new lease rental rates heading. The year one monthly rental rate by floor plan is entered with annual rent growth percentages applied to the year one rental rates you set in the analysis. Not all leases will turn over annually to the new lease rate, so renewal rent increases need to be input. The forecasted renewal increase percentage by floor plan by year is input, which will be applied to the in-place rental rate based on the turnover assumption. The revenue assumptions conclude with inputs for occupancy, bad debt, turnover, and other revenue. Occupancy and bad debt are contra-revenue accounts in the pro forma income statement meaning they will be negative adjustments in the revenue section. This is industry standard practice as property management fees are based on a percentage of effective gross revenue, so vacancy and bad debt needs to be deducted from revenue rather than expenses so that it reduces the property management fee paid. Turnover is a key revenue assumption that impacts the rent forecast as it will determine the percentage probability of the lease expiring and rolling to the new lease rented market. Operating expense assumption inputs are available for typical real estate operating costs, such as staffing expenses, insurance, property tax, and utilities. Many of the expenses, such as staffing expenses, insurance, and contacts, are entered on a per-unit per-year basis. This means that an input of $600 for insurance can be interpreted as insurance cost of $600 per year per unit. If your property being analyzed is 100 units, the total insurance expense will be $60,000 per year. Property tax as well as operating permits and fees are entered on a total per year basis. 
For example, if the property you are analyzing has a property tax bill for $100,000, you will enter $100,000 as your property tax assumption. All expense assumptions are grown at an annual operating expense inflation rate using the year one assumption input as the base. The property management fee expense assumption is a percentage input that calculates the fee as a percentage of net effective revenue. Net effective revenue is equal to rent plus other income less bad debt and vacancy expense. This is the industry standard property management fee calculation basis as the property manager should only be calculated on effective revenue collected. The rent model tab contains the complex unit by unit rental revenue forecast model. To assist with organization and limit the amount of flipping back and forth between tabs, we have pulled all key rental forecast information into the top of this tab. This allows for quick formula auditing as you have all pertinent information visible on one sheet. The information required from the assumption tab that have been brought over to the revenue model include the new lease rents by floor plan by year and renewal rent growth by floor plan by year as well as the annual turnover rate. The information is grouped to be quickly hidden or unhidden allowing you to focus on your analysis. The Pro Forma Models Multifamily Revenue Projection Module is complex and forecasts rates on a per-unit basis. Due to this level of detail, additional input information is provided. All of this information should be readily available from a seller or broker and is industry standard. The model is preformatted for up to 100 units, but the revenue model can be expanded by copying the final row down as many times as needed. The first input in the revenue model is for the unit number, which is useful for referring to individual unit level information. The second input is for the corresponding floor plan to the unit number. The floor plan drives the look UPS for the new lease rent growth and renewal rent growth, making it an incredibly important input. Please note the floor plan in the revenue model must tie exactly to the floor plan's input in the assumption tab. The third input is for the square footage of the unit, which is used for calculating price, value, and rent numbers on a per-square-foot basis. The move-in, expiration, and move-out dates by unit are input, which drives the calculation of the expiration date and expiration month. The dates drive the turnover calculations as the rents will change the month following the expiration of the in-place lease. The final input into the rental revenue forecast module is the current in-place rent for the unit, which will serve as the starting point for the rental revenue forecast. Please note that if a unit is currently vacant, leave the move-in, expiration, and move-out date as well as the in-place rent input as empty. The rental revenue forecast module will forecast these units at market rent as of day one with turnover occurring on the month following the anniversary of the closing date on an annual recurring basis. The calculation of the revenue forecast is complex but can be summarized of having three logic components. The first logic component is to check if the unit is vacant. If the unit is vacant, the rent is forecasted at market rates immediately with rent growth to occur on the annual anniversary of closing. The second logic component is to check if the unit is occupied and expiring. If the unit is occupied and expiring, the rental rate forecasted in the month following expiration is equal to the sum of in-place rental rate grown at the renewal rent growth assumption multiplied by 100% less the percentage turnover plus the market rental rate for the current year multiplied by the turnover assumption. This calculation essentially calculates the summed conditional probability of the unit turning over to market and the unit renewing at the renewal rate and utilized the blended rental rate calculated as the new rate. The third and final logic component is to check if the unit is occupied and not turning over in the current month. If this logic check is true and the unit continues to be occupied mid-lease, the current rental rate is continued and carried through the monthly forecast period. This is an institutional approach to forecasting rental revenue. It may seem complex, but Pro Forma Models has created the rental revenue forecast in a standardized methodology that will provide consistent and quality forecasting regardless of the property being analyzed. The Monthly Cash Flow tab provides a monthly income statement for the investment. The statement begins with rental income, which is a monthly consolidation of the rent model forecast. 
Other revenue is calculated based off the per unit monthly assumption input for your analysis. Vacancy and bad debt are contra revenue accounts and make deductions from rental and other income to determine the effective monthly revenue. Operating expenses based on the unique assumptions you entered for each line item summarized in the statement. Please note all expenses are on a straight line basis, meaning they do not have any fluctuations for seasonality or days in the month. The expenses laid out in the statement can be viewed as being on an accrual basis rather than a cash basis from an accounting perspective. The total expenses are deducted from the total effective revenue to calculate the net operating income for the month. Below the line expenses are then deducted from net operating income. Capital expenditures are costs for improvements to the property that are longer term in nature and can be depreciated. These costs are deducted as they are a cash expense. Investment general and administrative expenses are for items like tax returns for investors or audit expenses. Debt service, including both principal and interest, are also deducted before determining the periodic net monthly income or loss. The monthly cash flow statement concludes with a cumulative monthly tracking of principal and interest paid for quick access. Please note all ProForms models financial model products come with dynamic headers highlighting key analysis and investment metrics for constant review throughout your entire financial modeling process. The annual cash flow tab serves as a consolidator of the highly detailed monthly cash flow tab to create a shorter form and more easy to read annual cash flow statement report. Similar to the monthly cash flow tab, the annual cash flow tab begins with revenue and contra revenue accounts to showcase the annual effective gross income. Annual operating expenses are consolidated from the monthly cash flow and deducted from the effective gross revenue to determine the annual net operating income. Please note the year 1 annual net operating income serves as the numerator in the cap rate calculation with the purchase price entered in the model being the denominator. Just like the monthly cash flow statement, the annual cash flow tab consolidates capital expenditures, investment general and administrative expenses, as well as debt service costs consisting or principal and interest to calculate the annual net income or loss. The bottom of the annual cash flow tab also includes an annual tracking of cumulative principal and interest paid as well as a tracking of the pro forma property value. The pro forma property value is calculated by dividing the one year ahead net operating income by the exit cap rate assumption. The debt schedule tab is completely dynamic and starts with a summary of the mortgage assumptions in the loan details section. The debt schedule is organized to break out each component, such as principal, interest, and prepayments so a user can see all components of their total payment. The model has the ability to reflect an interest-only period within an amortizing loan and also has the ability to utilize floating rate debt. The loan summary section highlights the impact of prepayments. The data validation tab contains all controlled lists within the model and can be customized to your specific use. The Returns tab begins by providing a detailed sources and uses table showing how funds will be allocated on closing and the sources of funding for the investment. The Sources and Uses table is followed by a summary cash flow for up to a 10-year investment period. The cash flow works from revenue to net operating income, followed by reductions to determine the funds from operations, which is further reduced by capital expenditures to calculate the adjusted funds from operations. Following reductions for principal payments and renovation vacancy downtime, the free cash flow to equity is calculated. The section below the pro forma cash flow includes calculation of the yield in dollar terms, the cash surplus or deficit, as well as the funds from operations and adjusted funds from operations payout ratio. Now that we have the pro forma cash flow and free cash flow to equity, the deal level gross unlevered and levered returns are detailed. Each return table shows the levered and unlevered net cash flow, yield, IRR, and multiple of capital. Following the deal level levered and unlevered returns, the general partner and limited partner returns are showcased. The returns are presented in the same format as the deal level returns and includes the calculation of net cash flow, yield, IRR, and multiple of capital for the general partner and limited partner.
The final component of the Returns Output tab is the Waterfall Distribution. The Waterfall Distribution is pre-programmed as a return of capital to limited partners, an 8% preferred return to limited partners, and then a two-tier promote structure. The first promote tier is 15% of the return over 8% but less than 10% and the second tier is 25% over 10%. Please remember that all pro forma models are fully customizable to your specific use case and that the preloaded inputs are for illustrative purposes, but can be fully changed to your specific needs. Please reach out to pro forma models directly if you have any questions or require assistance. The Output tab provides visualizations of your analysis to help drive investment decision making. The first section is the sources and uses to visualize the allocation of costs on closing as well as the sources of capital. The following section visualizes the deal level gross levered and unlevered IRR as well as the general partner and limited partner IRR. A visual is also provided of the debt balance over time showing the cumulative principal paid and outstanding loan balance. The final section visualizes the operating results. The first chart tracks net operating income by year as well as revenue, expense, and net operating income growth. The last chart tracks the average daily rental rate by year as well as the number of days rented by year. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this pro forma models walkthrough and encourage you to visit our website to try the model for yourself.